Hey everyone, it's Steffi if you don't already know and on this channel I just talk about all things careers and all things lifestyle and in today's video I am going to be giving you the inside information that you need to ace those cover letters for your legal applications. Now the majority of the firms that I applied to were cover letter firms so I've got so much experience in terms of how best to structure them, what kind of information you want to be putting inside it and most importantly how you want to research those firms so that you can make sure that you're actually tailoring your cover letters to each firm and you're not just copying and pasting what you've already done before so if you like this kind of content please do make sure that you like comment and subscribe now this is actually a request that I got through my Instagram so please do make sure that you're following me there as well and if you ever have any other application tip requests that you'd like to send through to me feel free to DM me and I will make a video on it as soon as I can okay so first things first what is a cover letter in essence, it's traditionally a document that accompanies a CV. Now, a lot of law firms are actually moving away from CVs in their application process because there's basically just a lot of biases that can be found with CVs, for example, looking at people's names, etc., etc. So a lot of law firms are moving away from using CVs, but there are still a number of firms who use cover letters. And I think for me personally, the main reason why I think firms use this is because it's a great way to test your writing ability and also your ability to keep information concise. You basically use a cover letter to tell your story, but you don't just want to have pages and pages and pages of words. Nobody wants to read that, right? And for firms who don't put a word limit on their cover letter, they're really testing to see, can you condense all of the important information that you need to into a given, you know, reasonable length. So for me, my reasonable length is normally about 1.5 to maybe two pages at a push, but I'd say 1.5 pages is generally okay. Um, and they just want to see if you're able to do that whilst, you know, keeping every sentence valuable, making sure that you're adding value with your information, but you're also being concise. So first of all, which firms actually still use cover letters? There is a whole heap of them. Don't think that it's just, you know, a few firms here and there. There's quite a few. So we've got Ashurst, we've got Baker and McKenzie, we've got Collier Bristow, we've got Davis Polk, we've got DLA Piper, we've got Fried Frank, we've got Jones Day, Kirkland and Ellis, McFarlane's, Norton Ross Fulbright, Oric Harrington and Sutcliffe, Scadden, Sullivan and Cromwell, Travis Smith and White and Case. And I did apply to quite a few of these firms. Well, I say quite a few. Like, I wrote cover letters for some of these firms as well. So I've got quite a bit of experience in terms of knowing what to put into cover letters, knowing what to make them good, and knowing how to research these firms that I just listed out so that you can tailor each cover letter application. So hopefully you're going to find this super useful. Okay, so for me personally, the first thing that I would advise you to do when you're trying to research a firm for the purposes of writing the why that firm section of your cover letter is go directly to the firm's website. Now, a lot of people seem to skip this step and I don't particularly understand why. I think you should just always get information straight from the horse's mouth and then to the extent that you can't find something, obviously supplement it with other research sources. So for example, reaching out to employees on LinkedIn or attending the opening days and asking questions about things that you can't find on the website or researching you know other legal directories like chambers legal 500 all that sorts of stuff i think all those things are great but you should definitely always start with the firm's website first so scrolling through travis smith's website now first thing that i can see straight away is that they're recruiting 30 trainees next year so i've already got something that i can say about their intake size for example and for someone like me i'm someone who wouldn't particularly want to be part of a really really large intake because i like the fact that when you're part of a slightly smaller intake you tend to get a bit more responsibility earlier on now what does that look like in practice because i'm conscious of the fact that people tend to say a lot of words and say a lot of statements but there isn't always a lot of value behind them for me personally i'm part of an intake of 25 trainees and in terms of the responsibility that I've had in my first seat, I was running something called like an accession by myself. Now, an accession, just for people who were thinking like, oh, my gosh, a trainee was running a process like, you know, an accession is really not that deep. Um, it's basically just where there has been a precedent deal and then a new company might be joining that particular deal for a number of reasons. A really common reason is probably because um, there's been like a merger or something like that. So there's a new subsidiary. So they now need to become a party to the original deal. Now, 
for a trainee to be able to run something like that obviously under the supervision and guidance of their supervisor that's a lot of responsibility because that meant that i was responsible for liaising with all of the different jurisdictions that were involved i was responsible for drafting documents like release of security so if there was security under the original agreement and that had to be released and then new security had to be created i was responsible for drafting that kind of document I was responsible for making sure that all of the CPs that were required under this particular accession were either drafted or reviewed correctly. So that was again a lot of responsibility and just general case management. That's where I was able to add value. And that's something that for me personally, I feel like if I was part of a much larger cohort, I might not have had an opportunity to do something like that. So that's something that would be quite important to me and something that I personally, if I was applying to Travis Smith now, I would put that into my why that firm section of the cover letter because i would want the graduate recruitment team to see that i a understand what it is that trainees actually do but i b also have done my research looked at what the firm has and looked at the skills that i have and seen how they actually marry themselves together so as i'm on their website now another thing that i can see in bold is that it says we're looking for people who take their work but not themselves too seriously are partners of the future so that tells me a number of things it tells me something about the firm's culture now, I personally would kind of look at something like this and think to myself, OK, I'm going to try and get myself on one of Travis Smith's open days or recruitment events or something like that, because I'm going to want to speak to people who work at Travis Smith to find out what the culture of the firm is like. And then I'm also going to put that into my application too, because again, for me, working in a firm that says something like this, I want to know that they also practice what they preach and that I would be a good fit for a, kind of a place like that, because I am also someone who I take work very seriously when I need to, but I'm someone who also has fun as well. I'm someone who's an all round person and I have a life. So I feel like that would be a very good fit in terms of culture. So if that's something that applies to you as well, then make sure that you put something like that in your why that firm section of your cover letter. Now I've moved on to the R training section of the website, which again is very, very important. It's important that you understand what would your training contract actually look like at a given firm if you were to be accepted there. Now here it says that the firm is historically known as a corporate powerhouse, but there's also an award winning dispute resolution team. Now, if I was someone who, and anybody who knows me well knows that I have never said this, but if I was someone who absolutely loved dispute resolution, then that would be something that I would also put into my application. I would say, you know, maybe, and I would probably look for like an award or a deal to just back this up. But I would say something like another reason why I'm attracted to the firm is because I know that it's got a world renowned dispute resolution team and I'm very keen to learn more about XYZ. Do you know what I mean? Like you need to be able to show that you have A, researched what it is that the firm is a specialist in, but then B, also thought about what is it that you like and why is it that that matches up with what the firm has? And that's why you like that particular firm. So hopefully in terms of research, remembering that the first thing you need to do is look at the firm's website. And then from that, you can supplement that research with additional research. For example, like I said, attending opening days, attending law fairs, reaching out to their employees on LinkedIn, looking at legal cheek or legal 500 or chambers or lawcareers.net whatever it is that you want to get your information from using all of those secondary resources to supplement your research and picking out i'd say three key reasons as to why you want to be at that particular firm so the final section of your cover letter is actually the why you section and this is a section which in all honesty i think it's not looked at enough i think a lot of people kind of rush this section and they don't think it's as important because it doesn't specifically talk about the firm that you're applying to right but i think it's a pretty key part of the application it should probably take about 30 percent of your space and the reason why i say that is because first of all remember that this business is a client facing business that means you're going to be interacting with people and people want to know that you are also a human being as well right so that's important but then on the flip side or on the back end, you're working in a team. Solicitors don't work in isolation. And when you're part of a team working, quite frankly, sometimes long hours, you again want to know that you're just the kind of person that people can get, can get on with. So I think it's very key to be able to show that you don't just study all day or you don't just work all day or whatever stage you are in life, but you do also do other things. You have other interests. And importantly, you're able to identify what key skills you have picked up from those life experiences, from those work experiences, and how do they translate to the value that you would therefore add as a trainee if you were to join a particular firm. So to give you an example, um, a good kind of, you know, piece of life experience that I always used to mention was the fact that when I was in my first year at Durham University, I started the Durham African and Caribbean Dance Society. Now, my main reason for doing this was purely because I loved to dance. 
um it's my kind of form of release i think some people like to gym i like to dance something i've done for years right from childhood and when i went to durham there was a very very small kind of black community there um but i felt like dance was a great way to a bring us together but to b also teach others both within and outside of the community about our culture through the medium of dance now that was for me a way that i was able to kind of demonstrate that i had time management now how did i show that i was studying law so as anybody who has studied law before knows hell of a lot of reading there not a lot of time to do all of it so i was able to show my time management in that way i was also balancing that alongside two part-time jobs and just life generally i was also able to show my business acumen now how did i show that well, I started this society from scratch, right? So there were zero members. And then I started it, I became member number one. But I obviously understood that in order for this to keep going, I would have to find more people, I'd have to promote, I'd have to market, I'd have to make it seem appealing. And I ended up being able to kind of partner with other societies as well, and eventually get up to 20 members in the team, which was actually really cool. And we performed at things like fashion shows, we performed at open mic nights, we did a lot. And it all came from the fact that I was able to kind of motivate people to want to keep coming back week after week to dance with me. So that was able to show that, you know, I have picked up these skills from something that I enjoyed, something that I'm passionate about. And then when it came to me being able to reflect how this would be important for me as a trainee, well, I was able to show that I understand that as a trainee, and I can testify to this now because I am a trainee, you will sometimes be on a number of different deals at once. You need to be able to manage your time. So the fact that I was able to manage my time when I was in my first year, trying to navigate and understand what being in university was like, as well as keeping up with my um, degree, as well as keeping up with my two jobs, and I was still able to do the society on the side, that can kind of translate to the fact that even when there are a number of deals for me to work on, I will be able to itemize and write appropriate to-do lists so that I'm able to keep on top of everything and not let anything go to the side. I was also able to show my kind of discipline and my resilience, which again is really, really important in the legal field. So the key thing that I'm getting at here is pick maybe one to two key experiences that you feel like show a number of different skills that you have, as opposed to thinking of a different experience for every skill. Highlight what those skills are and then highlight how they're actually important in the role that you would be playing as a trainee if you were to be accepted at a particular firm. So that is the end of my cover letters video. Now, I really do hope that you found this useful, especially as I went through some examples of my own for you. This is a request that actually did come in through my Instagram. So please do make sure that you follow me there as well. And if there are any other requests, please do feel free to DM me. If you like this kind of content, please do make sure that you like, comment and subscribe. And I'll be back again with another video.